YouTube, what's good with y'all, man? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Welcome back to a brand new tutorial on the channel. Hope y'all doing good. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why your beat sound muddy. Like how to get rid of your beat sounding like this. Like that's not what we want, you feel me? So I'm gonna be showing y'all how to get rid of muddy sounding samples, muddy sounding drums, uh, muddy sounding mixes in general, the entire beat, and how to get them to sound crispy clean, bro. So yeah, I'm gonna just show y'all my techniques and methods on how I make my sample sound good and how to really like be able to hear every single individual melody layer that's being played without them sounding all clustered up together. So if that's something you're trying to achieve or something that you're struggling with, make sure to keep watching, man. So let's get right into it. Let's get it. All right, man, got FL Studio opened up. As y'all can see, empty project. We'll be starting out by making the sample from scratch. We'll start up a send to BPM. Let's go for 166 today. And for that first melody layer, got Omnisphere pulled up. It's gonna be looking for a sound. It sounds good, basically. Uh, gonna be laying down the foundation for the sample that we can later build off of. Start out in the keyboards category. I'm gonna randomize the presets right here and just look for something that uh, inspires me, basically. It's not bad. I think I'm gonna start out with that. Or oh, we can always change up the preset. In my previous video, I started out on this MIDI keyboard. For the ones that watch my videos, y'all know that I can't really play the keys like that. But if you play your melodies by hand, you come out with way different shit compared to just clicking it in through the piano roll. So I think I'm going uh, to try experimenting on the MIDI keyboard a little bit. Ooh, hold on. Something like that, bro. Like also, you don't want it to be perfect. So I'm just slightly pressing to the grid. Uh, like you don't want it to sound too robotic, especially if you're playing it in by hand. Like you don't want to take that emotion out. Take it down another octave. Copy it over. You can try changing up the root notes. Let's try bringing this up to D. Oh, it's close to this F sharp, so I think I'm gonna cut that root note out. Bring this to D as well. Push this down to uh, B. A lot of emotion to it, bro. Like the top line stays the same, only the root notes change. I like how that preset sounds, but it's not really the uh, the vibe that I'm trying to go for. So I think I'm gonna switch up the preset. And that's also a crucial part, but if you don't want your samples to sound muddy, so have a good sound selection. Well, I got plenty of videos explaining sound selection. It should pop up in one of the corners. So if you're still struggling with that, make sure to check that out. I wanna add some halftime on this mixer track. See how it sounds, halftime. I think it would sound better, halftime. Let's um keep the halftime on that mixer track and just browse through the presets. I don't know what this shit does, bro. But I was process this shit a little bit. Click this button right here first to uh, render it out to an audio clip. Especially when using halftime, bro. Like I always like rendering out my melodies. Uh, Cause let's say I play this melody right here, like uh, in between the fourth and the fifth bar. Like this shit starts tweaking. Feel me? Like it doesn't even play right here. But if you render it out, you feel me? Like I just like rendering this shit out, bro. Start up with Shaper Box. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Open up another shaper box. Try looping that. Like that. But that shit crazy, bro. I don't know what I did, bro. I believe with this first shaper box, I kind of half sped it, I think. I kind of repeated this, this third bar. That shit is smooth, bro. That shit tough. Sounds like a sample. I think I'm gonna render this shit out again. Pitch it back up to F sharp. Uh, let's process this once again. <laughs> Start out with fucking auto tune, bro. It's kind of detuned. Kind of push it to the scale. Open up this uh, this waves real tune, real tune, real time stereo. Tune. Bro, I don't even know, bro. This auto tune. Next, open up an EQ. Get rid of some of the harsh frequencies, unwanted frequencies. Should be enough. Compress it a little bit. Push the loud and quiet parts a little bit closer together. Very subtle. Not too much, but we need the perfect reverb for this. I think I'm open up Super Plate from South Toys 5. But it's one of the most unique samples I ever made, bro. Should have sampled by itself. Just a little bit of reverb, man, to add some, some ambience, some room to it. 
I think that's pretty much it for the first uh, melody layer. But. So now for the second layer to already tackle that muddiness to kind of avoid it, I'm gonna open up a um, parametric EQ on the master just to show y'all. As I can see, this first layer is very present between 200 and 2000 Hertz. This frequency range right here. So I don't want to add another melody that's also very present in this uh, frequency range, you feel me? And sample-wise, that's probably the easiest way on how you can avoid that, that muddiness. So next time I add a layer that's very present in the higher frequencies, can never go wrong with a vocal chop. Got RK pulled up. I think I'm going to go into this distant voices bank to get an ambient vocal. Yup. So I'll find this uh, vocal phrase right here. Sounds cool, but kind of got to manipulate it a little bit. So I'm going to render it out into an audio clip as well. Maybe pitch it down an octave. Of course, got to EQ it since it's sounding muddy right now. Kind of want to make it stand out on the second part so it's not too repetitive. Pitch it up right here. Every second bar. Turn the second bar down to high pitch. It's very sharp. Y'all gonna see why. So I turned this part, these two down. Now I'm gonna render this out to an audio clip as well. To stay organized. And let's shelf this. Hmm. Perfect, bro. Damn. Yeah. That's hard, bro. Makes it stand out a little bit. I automated this shaper box so it's only present. Are only active on the higher pitch vocal layer some compression once again so the uh, lower pitch vocal chop is as loud as the high pitch vocal chop some distortion on that vocal bro tough some reverb some delay that's perfect bro blends together perfect the sample sounded really good so far it sounded really full uh, i do want to add some low into that sample so i'm gonna add a couple more things I think I want to open up contact for that bass since we don't have any low end in the sample yet. And once again, of course, keeping those frequency ranges in mind. Like this preset, so let's lay down a bass pattern underneath those uh, two layers that we got so far. I'm just simply copy over the root notes that we started out with. I could just leave the root notes like this, but I kind of want it uh, to stand out a little bit, you feel me? So I'm uh, shorten these notes and add some riffs in between every root note. Crazy, bro. Like it's not sounding muddy since we're using different frequency ranges for each each layer. Perfect. Process the bass a little bit. Cut out all the frequencies under around 50 hertz since that's what usually uh, makes these sub basses sound very muddy. Like you don't need these frequencies at all. You don't even hear them. Feel me? Another EQ. With some of those higher mids. That's it. Uh, so next I still want to add something catchy, you feel me? Like some sort of counter melody uh, that really gets stuck in the listener's head or that can inspire an artist for uh, a flow on a hook, for example. Try using that. Something like that, bro. Ooh. That's it, crazy, bro. That's what I mean with some catchy shit. Bro. Perfect. As for the effects, nothing too crazy. Start out by panning this to the left to kind of separate it from the sample a little bit. Gives it its own little spot in the mix. It also takes away that muddiness since not everything is centered right in the middle of the mix. As well as some EQ and some reverb. Blends in perfectly once again. So sample pretty much finished. I'm gonna add one more thing and pan it to the right side since I need something to complement this bell that I pan to the left. Otherwise that bell is really gonna stand out too much since it's the only thing in the entire sample that's pan to the left. So we need something to complement it like I said. <laughs> Uh, the stereo sync preset, very repetitive pattern. Just following C sharp. Of course, pan it to the right, like I said. A little bit of EQing and some reverb. That's all it needs. Yeah, that's it. 
All right, man, as y'all can see, arrange the sample real quick. It's time to add some drums under this sample. Sample came out crazy, bro, I ain't gonna lie. For the drums, of course, it's also really important to have a good sound selection to avoid your drums clashing with your samples. And only if I had some, some already processed, already EQ'd, already compressed, industry ready, high quality drum sounds, bro. Only if. My half a cent and rook season drum kit, the only way, man. The only way. I keep telling y'all, the only two drum kits you need to lay down hard drums, man. Got 808s in it. Got bonus loops, claps, effects, hi-hats, kicks, open hats, percussion, snares, and FL Studio themes. Also gonna be using sounds of my new upcoming make-believe drum kit. It's not out yet. I'm still working on it, but it's gonna be my craziest drum kit by far, man. So y'all make sure to subscribe to the channel. Follow me over on Instagram to stay notified when I drop this kit, man. So let's do it. And of course, for the drum pattern, want to compliment the sample perfectly. Uh, sample's already sounding quite busy, so I don't want to overdo it with the drums. Let's start with the hi-hat. One of my favorite hi-hats, I'm gonna have a cent drum kit. Very tight, very simple, bro, you feel me? Like, really punching through. I got that snare sounds, use that. <laughs> Already adding a lot, a lot of bounce to it. Not sounding muddy, too. Feel me? Yeah, I'm gonna keep this shit right here. Next man, let's let's add some rolls to the highest man. Fuck it. Try another one right here. Yeah. Bring us to the front a little bit. Some rolls to the second part. I think for the rolls, wanna keep it quite simple. These uh, second two bars. This one right here, maybe. Pitch it down a little bit right here. That's perfect, bro. Next, I'm add a counter snare to it from a half cent drum kit. Just kind of add more bounce to the drums, feel me? Like a little bit more swing, that makes sense. Yeah. One at the end right here. Next, uh, just a little open hat before we add the 808. One right here. And the last uh, snare right here. <laughs> a lot of bounce, bro. Maybe add another one right here. Turn it down to velocity. Yup. I already knew that I was gonna use the spins, you feel me? But just wanted to preview the sounds real quick. For the 808 pattern, once again, I'm going to these chords. Uh, so we stay within the root notes. Copy it over into the 808 pattern like that. Damn. Damn. Oh my God. Alright man, so I think that's pretty much it for today's beat. Sample came out crazy. Drums came out crazy. Beat came out fire, bro. I ain't even gonna lie. Oh, so yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it, man. So it's the beat that we ended up with. Alright man, so that's pretty much it for today's video. That's how I make my mixes sound clean instead of them sounding muddy and all clustered up. So I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Really want to thank y'all for watching the video all the way to the end. Uh, and if y'all find this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video, man. We close to 50k. Thank y'all. If you got any other video topics or things you want to see me do on the channel in the future, don't forget to leave a comment. I read every single comment under every single one of my videos. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram to stay notified when I drop new videos, new kits, all that. Don't forget to check out my drum kits. I'm gonna have a link down in the first link down in the description. And that's pretty much all I got for today's video, man. So I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out.